I want to show you a demonstration that I do after students have done some studying of properties of gases and in particular gas laws. They've studied Boyle's law, they've studied Charles law, they've done experiments with Boyle's law, they've done they've studied Gilusac's law dealing with pressure temperature and they've done a, a, a laboratory experiment with that as well. But those are experiments that often you have to have students sharing equipment and we all know that not every student participates in an experiment in the way we'd like. And so what I like to do part way through our study of gas laws is to have students participate in examining properties of gases as an individual experimenter. So this particular demonstration, which is entitled Marshmallow in a Vacuum, is one in which I hand out a syringe with a Lurlock type valve. It's a one-way valve. And the syringe that I give them is a 60 milliliter syringe, although the volume isn't real critical. However, the volume of the syringe has to be able to accommodate uh, what I use as a, a mini marshmallow. And the mini marshmallows I use, I don't skimp on them for a couple of reasons. One of which is I don't want the marshmallows to stick to the inside of the syringe itself. And secondly, I like to eat marshmallows and I'd rather eat good marshmallows than the ones that tend to stick to everything. Now, one of the precautions, we don't eat food in chemistry class, chemistry lab. So when I do this demonstration, one of the provisions, one of the precautions that I take is that I take some of the marshmallows from the bag and those we're going to use for experimentation. The rest of the marshmallows I set aside for later on and I tell the students, don't eat the marshmallows that I give you now. There will be marshmallows later on the end of class. If you'd like some, you may take some. Okay. So with that in mind, then we're going to personally experience the effect of Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law involves pressure times volume equals a constant provided we keep moles and temperature constant. Okay. Now, the syringe itself with a Lurlock valve attached is given to them just as I, I'm showing you now and that is with the valve closed. And of course, my first step is to say remove the barrel. So they take that barrel and they start pulling it out and you hear that sound because they can pull the barrel out only so far before the force pushing in on the barrel is greater than the force pushing out. So they might have learned already to open up the valve, but I will tell them to make certain before you try to remove that barrel, open up the valve. Once they've done that, then you're going to hear about, oh, 12, 15, 18, 20, however many students who are in your class at that time, that sound. And then they'll put it back in. And after a while, you just have to say, keep the barrel out. Okay. I do hand out mini marshmallows. And I give one to each student. Depending upon the class, I might hand them to the first student in the row or I might hand them out individually because they might not get back to that student in the back, which is another reason why you don't sit in the back of the room. Okay. And I do provide some pens, although students have their own pens. I'll give them something like a Sharpie or so with a fine tip point. And I'll tell them, put a face on the marshmallow and make it a nice face. All right. So we're going to make this one a smiley face, as you can see. The marshmallow has no idea what's going to happen to it. <laughs> I 
I then tell them, put the marshmallow carefully into the syringe. Maybe even have that face showing so that you can see what's going to happen to the marshmallow and how the marshmallow behaves in this. Then carefully insert the barrel into the syringe. And with the marshmallow all the way down, push that barrel of the syringe down so that it's just touching the marshmallow. Just like that. Still smiling. Okay, now close the valve on the syringe and pull out on the barrel and observe. Now, if you have that special marshmallow, it might go, help me, help me. Not all marshmallows do that. But if you're in the right place at the right time, it might. Then let that barrel go back in and observe. Pull out the barrel again and observe that face and let it back in. And students will do this. They probably do this for about an hour and a half or longer if you allow them to do that. Okay? I'm not sure, but it's possible that that smile has started to turn into a frown. I'm not real sure about that, but it might have. Now, after having done this for a number of times, students might observe what, what the appearance of the marshmallow is. So I'm going to do this a few more times, somewhat rapidly. And as I pull it out, marshmallow expands. As I let that barrel in, the marshmallow is pushed in. Okay. What I'm doing here is I'm changing the volume of the syringe, and with a closed system, nothing gets in, nothing gets out, I have the same number of moles of air in there. I have essentially the same temperature. So with the larger volume, the pressure of the gas inside the syringe has decreased. Well, let's take a look at that marshmallow. So I open up the valve, pull out the barrel, take a look at the marshmallow, and we can compare that to a marshmallow that, similar to one we started with. It's no wonder that marshmallow's depressed. You'd be depressed too if you looked like that. Now the question is, why did the marshmallow change size? Well, when they make marshmallows, they put a lot of, and I don't think it's air, it's probably nitrogen or some, some gas that would not oxidize would not react readily with the marshmallow. After all, you don't want stale marshmallows in the bag. Not before you, you're ready to eat them. So the marshmallow has a lot of gas pockets, we'll use that term, inside. And as we expand the volume in the syringe and we reduce the pressure outside the marshmallow, the gas particles in the marshmallow cause the marshmallow to expand. And some of the surface breaks, releasing some of the gas in the, that was in the marshmallow. So it's not as puffy. And then when you allow that syringe to go back in, no more gas goes into that marshmallow. So it now has less gas molecules inside, less gas trapped in there. And as you do that, more and more gas comes out of the marshmallow, and as a result, it decreases in size. 
So what we've seen then is a way of allowing students to experience firsthand properties of uh, a property of gas, and that is the pressure volume relationship, which is an inverse one known as Boyle's Law. Now, having done this, will probably bring a smile to students' faces, similar to the smile that was on the face of the marshmallow at the beginning. Um, maybe it's, if we turn it upside down, it'll be a frown now. Uh, as well, students get to eat, not this marshmallow, but marshmallows that I've set aside at the end of the class. So this, this demonstration, marshmallows in a vacuum, is what I would refer to as a truly sweet demo.